Hi, this is Alan with Referral Cleaning Restoration, and we've arrived at a home, and as you can see, this is not the normal condition of your basement carpet. It is wet. Uh, overnight, we had a large storm. The sump pump cannot keep up with the water, and as a result, the basement has flooded. So, I just wanted to show you real briefly the different steps that Referral would take to restore this basement. So, the first most important step is finding what's wet and finding all perimeters. So, as you can see here, we have a case with several different types of meters that work differently for different types of materials. We have a moisture probe that we can use to poke into the carpet and pad because sometimes the padding is wet below where the carpet's not so this way you can see how far that's wet. We have meters that you can uh, drive into a material such as a solid wood floor to see the moisture content of the wood inside. We have a meter that measures the temperature and humidity and grains of the air. We have a non-destructive meter that we can place on the wall. And as you go down, it alerts you to when there is excessive amounts of moisture by sending a signal through these pads. We also have a thermal imaging camera that senses temperature. Where it's wet, it's evaporating, it's cooler. This senses and gives you a visual of that temperature difference. So these are the tools that we use to see what's wet, if it's drying, and when it's dry, we will know for sure. The next important step is going to be uh, moving furniture so that we don't leave furniture stained. You can see we have sliders here so that we can safely move your furniture to an area that uh, is unaffected. The next step will be extraction. Depending on the severity, we may use a floor tool to extract standing water, but if there is pad below the carpet, your pad will still be wet. So I have another video you could look at um, after this that explains that more in depth. This is our weighted extractor that we will ride on. It's self-propelled and will extract by compressing the carpet pad to squeeze out as much water as possible because it's hundreds of times faster to extract water than to try to evaporate it. So that is going to be the most, uh, one of the most important steps in this process. There's many different ways to dry depending upon the condition of the carpet, the type of pad, uh, how wet it's been, how long it's been wet. There's different ways you can go about restoring a home. There's no one right way. Sometimes the carpet and pad will be removed and replaced but you still have your structure and walls to dry. And that's the most important part. That's where you can get mold on these outside exterior walls. They're not gonna dry on their own very well. So that's our main focus. So here I set up a couple different ways that we may dry. If you come over here, you can see this is a low grain refrigerant dehumidifier, much more powerful than what you're gonna buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. These are made specifically for this type of work to put out a very dry air. So one example is sometimes we may dry the air. This is an electric heater that then will direct it to what's wet. So the key to drying is hot, dry airflow to the water. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, our ceiling, our walls up here are not wet. Our air is not a, uh, our main concern. What our concern is is trying to dry the floor and from a foot down on this wall, that's what's wet. So we're trying to contain our hot, dry air to those areas if possible. So we have here a containment barrier that creates a channel where we can duct that dry, hot airflow right along to what's wet. Using this method, you can get that wall to 150 degrees plus or minus. That is going to cause the moisture to evaporate from those wet materials without having to remove them. Some companies will come in uh, and remove wet materials when maybe it's not necessary. Uh, just because drywall gets wet does not mean it has to be removed. If the insulation is wet, it may require uh, taking the baseboards off and directing air into the wall cavity to dry the insulation. But if only your drywall is wet, many times it can be dried without tearing out the wall, which then requires new drywall, new painting construction, and the process really continues on. So with the method that we're using here, our goal is to try to get it back to normal as soon as possible um, with the least amount of tear-up. So then our next step 
is another way is we have these air movers that we can direct along the wall, an axial fan and a laminar fan, and those would also direct airflow right along the base of the walls that are wet. So another way sometimes is you may have an air mover blowing underneath the carpet to float the carpet. That's another method. So these are a couple different ways we might dry. Uh, I'll check back with you and we'll take a few other videos or photos to show you the progress on this job.